So in the previous video, I looked at how you can use the p5.js create blank functions to create HTML elements on the page. Create an h1 element, create a paragraph, create a paragraph, create a paragraph, each one using dynamic content like a random number. So what I want to look at now is how you can start to manipulate these elements on the fly. And a big topic of that is how to manipulate the style of those elements. Change their font, change their color, uh, highlight them when the mouse is over them. Those pieces, I'm going to sort of like dip a toe into this. I'm going to leave all the style stuff for an entire separate video. I'm going to look at two pieces of functionality. One is moving their position on the page, and two is changing the content of the element itself. So first, let's just think about positioning on the page for a second. So I, I have no idea what I'm about to draw. It's, it's going to start at, ah, this is not a good pen. Uh, it's going to start as a uh, rectangle. So if this is the page, you can see there was this h1 element, then there was a paragraph element, then there was a canvas, was, there is a canvas element, another h1, and another paragraph. So one thing you'll notice about HTML is it you know, flows in this very intuitive way like a document. Each thing added to the page sits below the other thing. There's some padding, some margin. You know, what we're looking at is the sort of default styling of the page. So there's really two things. There's like, you can think of layout and styling. And kind of, you know, there's a blurry line between those two things. But this is one of the things that you can do with DOM elements, with HTML elements, is something known as absolute positioning. Now, often <laughs> absolute positioning is like a terrible idea. So you want to be careful here. And I'm going to look at lots of different ways of thinking about the flow of the page later. But more what I want to just, what I want to show you is just a little bit of functionality of how you might act on one of these elements. And the piece of functionality, two pieces of functionality I'm going to show you is the position function and the HTML function. The HTML, the position function applies absolute positioning to an element. So I could like just stick this element over on top of the canvas or over here. The HTML function deals with the content that's appearing. So I could change the header from saying I am making a, my favorite numbers to my favorite colors. So these are the two pieces of functionality that I want to look at. But we're missing kind of a crucial detail here. When I say there's a position function and an HTML function, what do I call it on? Well, I want to call it on the object associated with that h1 element, or the object associated with that paragraph element, or the object associated with that canvas. Where is that object in the code? I don't see it. Well, here's a little secret for you. It's not such a secret, but something that I just didn't bother to mention before. The create functions make an object, an object that holds all the information about that element and allows you to execute functions on that element. I'm just not using that object, but I could make a variable called canvas, I could make a variable called h1, and I could say canvas equals create canvas, h1 equals uh, the create element. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying make that canvas and store all the information associated with that canvas in this particular variable. Make that h1 element and store all the information about that element in that h1 variable. And where do you call position? Where do you call HTML? You call it on that object. So these aren't functions just like lying around for you to just say. You've got to say something dot position, something dot HTML. Now honestly, I don't know if I'm doing such a good job with this. Probably the something dot style is a function that you ultimately will want to use the most. But again, style, CSS, a little bit of a bigger topic. We'll get to that later. So let's look at these as two demonstrations. And there's a lot of functions. And uh, uh, a lot that we're going to look at in videos. There's a lot more that we'll see as I get to future and future things. So let's start with position. Um, so here I am. I'm going to say canvas dot position. And let's just say 0, 0 and see what happens. Like, where is 0, 0 on the page? Look at that. Now, this is sort of, this is why absolute positioning can be kind of a bad idea. <laughs> like, things are now, like, the other stuff is not, I, I've got natural flow. I don't know what that means. But I've got, like, not natural, that's a terrible word to use natural here. But I've got the default flow of the page, right, of the things just sitting next to each other. And then I have I'm overriding that with absolute positioning by using the p5 position function to set the canvas exactly there. Now, um, if the canvas, uh, one thing I could do here, which I think it would be interesting, is I could change from background to clear. 
Clear is a function that instead of drawing a color across the background, clears it and leaves it transparent. I hope this works. And you can see now the canvas is actually sitting there, but all of it is transparent except for the rectangle I drew. So that's sort of interesting to see what kinds of strange experiments you might have if you have an HTML page with a big canvas as like an overlay on top of it. Um, so that's something you can see here. The other thing I might do is uh, set the background to white. And then I might set the, uh, and let's put it somewhere else. Let's put it off to the side at like, whoops, sorry. Let's put it at like 400, zero. And then let's put this H1 element at 400 comma 100. And you can see here, I'm going to take out the clear. And I'm going to run this again. And we can see here. And now this is sort of hard to see what's going on. So let me actually not make the background white, but just like a kind of nice gray. Boy, I didn't really plan this very well. And you can see like what's going on now. I mean, there's all sorts of craziness. Like this is the stuff that was in the HTML originally. Then I put the canvas over there. Let's move it down on the page. That'll like be a little bit nicer, uh, like 500 pixels down. And we'll put this at 600 to be in the middle. So you can see like, ah, now I've got, now I'm getting somewhere. Like this is the default flow of the HTML elements and then I absolute position this canvas and this other header down there. What happens when I start clicking? Those other paragraphs are getting added without absolute positioning, so they're up there. So you can see there's a lot of possibilities here in how you can start like strangely arranging things on the page by letting things flow in the sort of document way versus absolutely positioning things. Now there's two things that I want to mention here. Way more than two, but two that I started. Number one is, this is interesting because the canvas is now positioned where? The canvas is positioned at the coordinate 400, 500. That pixel coordinate is the pixel coordinate of the entire page. But remember, the rectangle is at 100, 100. That location is relative to the canvas itself. So as you're moving the canvas around, it still retains its own coordinate system. So the, now there's two coordinate systems to think about if you're using absolute positioning. The coordinate system of the full page and the coordinate system of the canvas only. Now let's do some things here to, uh, I'm going to leave this off for a second and I'm going to just reload the page like this. So you can see I put the canvas down there on the bottom right. Um, let's look at one other piece of functionality which is the, uh, uh, I kind of lost my steam here a little bit, but look at this HTML function. So what do you do with that function? That function changes the content of an element. So let me come back over here and I'm going to add here in mouse press. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to start this H1 element with just the text waiting. <laughs> And now I run it, you can see I've got the HTML element, the, the one that I created, the canvas down there. Now when I click mouse pressed, I'm going to say h1.html. Now I will show you my favorite number. So when I create the element, I give it default co content or the starting content waiting. When I click the mouse, I change its content to this other text. This is another thing that you can do to manipulate the elements on the fly. So let me run this. You can see it says waiting. As soon as I click the mouse, it changes to now we'll show you my favorite numbers and those other elements are added as well. So these are two pieces of functionality that you can use. You can use the position function to absolute position elements along the page kind of regardless of what the sort of of what the default flow, document flow of the page is. And you can also use the HTML function to change a piece of content at a given time. Now, there's uh, two more things, <laughs> I always say two, that I'm thinking of here. One is, what if you wanted to change the content of up there, I am making a video, right? Well, that's not an element that I made in my JavaScript, so I don't have a reference to it, right? That element, if you recall, is just written in to the HTML file itself. So there is a way to do that. I'm leaving that for a later video. Right now, in what you're able to do if you're just following these along exactly is, you're, you're going to want to, the elements that you want to manipulate, make those elements in JavaScript. The elements that you don't need to manipulate, leave those in the HTML. And you're going to see that, that line between those two things is going to get absolutely erased.
but it's sort of worth looking at for, uh, that's sort of a restriction in terms of what I've shown you so far. The other thing that I think is worth noting is that, remember, there's an animation loop going on here for the canvas. For example, um, if I add uh, var x equals 100, var y equals 100, and then I draw the rectangle at those locations and I say, you know, x equals x plus random, negative 5, 5. So now here in the draw loop, you can see, look, there's an animation going on here where that canvas is animating. But it's not just that the canvas is animation animating, this draw loop is happening over and over and over and over and over again. So let's look at something like kind of strange that I can do. What if I said in here, h1 position x comma y. Now, is that h1 going to appear? Where's that h1 going to appear? Is it going to appear on top of the rectangle? Right, the rectangle is drawn at an xy, and the header h1 thing is now drawn at the xy. They should be on top of each other. No, the answer is not true. Because remember, DOM elements, their position is relative to the entire page. Things you're drawing on the canvas are relative to just the canvas itself. So the H1 element will be at 100, 100 relative to the top left corner of the page, the rectangle relative to the top left corner of the canvas. So let me run this again. And you can see, look at that. Waiting is now jiggling. That text is now jiggling up there as well. So in the same way that you apply variables to things that you draw and animate in the canvas, you can apply those variables to things that you might want to move or animate or change on the page. And so <laughs> um, with that, I'm going to uh, stop this video. In the, in the next video, I want to look at um, events. So binding events, tying events to those DOM elements. I think that's the next thing on my list. Let me look here. Uh, uh, whatever, I'll, I'll figure it out when I get to that. I think that's what it is. Um, but for you, if you're looking for an exercise to do right now, right? first you added stuff to the HTML page. Then you made HTML elements in JavaScript. Now see if you can animate those DOM elements, animate your canvas by using position, or change the content. What if you made uh, DOM elements uh, content a random number every frame? Or what if you displayed the XY location of something in your canvas as a text element on the page, a paragraph element? So those are some things you can try. Okay, and stop. <laughs>